And Jimmy Pendarvis, uh, if you're watching, please get on social media. Use the hashtag PlayPokemon. Let us know who you think is going to win, Chris or Jimmy. We have the Garboder deck going up against the Volcanion deck. And uh, Chris starting off with a pretty lackluster turn one. Yeah, his hand doesn't do too much, but that he doesn't really give that off to Jimmy. The fact that he used a Hex Maniac on the opening turn, it doesn't really give away anything. He usually wants to do that and then follow up with a Sycamore and hopefully get down a Garboder so that he locks out all abilities for the entire game. Yeah, Jimmy playing Ultra Ball here. He'll be able to search for any Pokemon he wants and put it into his hand. Uh, no abilities can be used because of that Hex Maniac, as you mentioned, and uh, we'll see which Pokemon he's going to find here. Yeah, it, uh, it, it might hinder him a little bit here. Uh, sometimes you want to go for that Tapu Lele, use Wonder Tag, and find yourself a great supporter for the turn. Uh, he also is going to use this time that he has with the Ultra Ball search to see what's prized. And uh, I'm sure immediately the first thing he checks for when he has Staryu as his active is, where's my Starmie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fortunately the Staryu does have no retreat costs, so he can retreat whenever he wants and probably uh, retreat to a Pokemon and try to attack this turn, maybe that regular Volcanion. I uh, just want to point out, Jimmy Pendarvis is one of the highest ranked players in North America currently. He is number 11 coming into this weekend, so he's looking to solidify his position in the top 16 heading into the World Championships as we do see Professor Sycamore discarding his hand and drawing seven fresh cards. Yeah, and what a start for Jimmy so far. He was already able to uh, play down everything that he had in his in his previous hand. Got that Fighting Fury Belt down on the Turtonator. Uh, unfortunate for him that he wasn't able to get any uh, fighting or fire energies into the discard pile, and it looks like I don't I, maybe just one in his hand. Uh, so no real energy acceleration for Jimmy. Yeah, can't use steam up either because of the hex maniac. Just gonna have to use that power heater for 20 damage here, and it looks like a slow start for both sides. But an interesting card there, fighting fury belt. How, why do you think we're seeing Fighting Fury Belt now as opposed to the Choice Band we've been seeing? Yeah, uh, initially when uh, Choice Band came out, everyone said, oh, 30 damage, that's so much better. Uh, but the reason that people started switching back to Fighting Fury Belt is because we've seen uh, field blowers start to go away. People are maybe only playing just one, and that means that they can keep the, that 40 extra hit points, that, which is mainly the reason that you're playing the Fighting Fury Belt. Tails on the Acid Spray, so... Energy will not go into the discard pile. Uh, that's a mostly irrelevant coin flip, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the energy would just come out of the discard pile with the power heater. But, hey, Chris has nothing. He's going to do whatever he can to, to try to stay in the game. Right. And and that turn was a big tell for Jimmy. He, he The first turn with the Hex, he said, all right, you probably have something. But as soon as your opponent just acid sprays, you know that it's time <laughs> to just sick him more. Never play an end until you see anything out of Chris. So we've seen two steam ups now, and that means this Volcanion can hit for 80 damage and the knockout on this Trubbish, actually 90, thanks to the Fighting Fury Belt. And Chris is under a lot of pressure. Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, uh, the knockout, he did a little extra damage by doing both of those power heaters, but, um, but both of those steam ups, rather. But he wanted to get the extra energies in play, so now he's got the Turtonator online, and the Volcanion is doing enough pressure as it is. We do see the trash Lance from Chris. Looks like just doing 60 damage. And like you were mentioning, this is the slow version of the Volcanion deck that doesn't use as many item cards. And Jimmy doing whatever he can to not play them so that he doesn't fuel that trash Lance on Chris's side. Yeah, that's right. We see Jimmy holding on to a lot of item cards in his hand, and he's probably just purposely not going to play these unless he has to, unless, he, unless it's going to make a knockout happen or he just... Uh, Smells blood in the water, just wants to go for the big knockouts here. Looks like off of his prizes, he did get that Starmie, so he'll be able to get that into play. Uh, I don't think there are any fire energy in the discard pile, though, so Space Beacon won't be able to do anything. And uh, I think Jimmy trying to decide, do I want to Sycamore away a handful of item cards? No, just the Olympia, and we could see Turtonator GX start to attack. Yeah, he can get that Shell Trap going, I guess. He doesn't have any energies to, to start to uh, put some, some big damage on Grobiter, even knock it out. But uh, Shell Trap's going to put on some, some pretty good pressure. Uh, the math is a little bit off. The Garbiter can still attack into the Turtonator, take those eight damage counters, and leave the Garbiter with ten hit points left. <laughs> but 
Uh, it doesn't ever, it, I mean, to put that extra damage down, it feels pretty nice for Jimmy. Yeah, uh, Trash Lanch does 60, but gets hit for eight damage counters back on the Shell Trap. That is painful. And now it looks like Jimmy is in complete control. He's still in an awkward situation with uh, maybe not wanting to discard a bunch of item cards, but I think he's content to continue attacking. Yeah, he's he's got supporters whenever he really feels the pressure to, to go for it. But uh, he, he just doesn't have to. So why, why give your opponent all those items to fuel up their trash lance if you don't have to? Absolutely. And we see the energy evolution now from Eevee. Chris still unable to find a supporter card, but he'll be able to get Espeon GX into play, and perhaps this will turn the tides a little bit. Yeah, Espeon has been a great inclusion in the Garboder decks because it forces your opponent to play items when you use that Confusion attack. Uh, when you Psybeam, you, you make your opponent either have that Switch card or they have to use supporters to go and find those Switch cards because they never want to attack into Confusion. It's so risky. To, to flip, and if you don't uh, get that heads, you're going to take damage, and you didn't uh, do any damage to your opponent. Yeah, awkward for Chris, though. Shell Trap is still activated, so if he wants to Psybeam, he's still going to eat eight damage counters from the Shell Trap, and that's exactly what we see here. Uh, the Turtonator GX now with 30 extra damage, and it is confused. Yes. Will, will Jimmy want to go for the coin flip? <laughs> I see a switch in his hand. I'm hoping he doesn't go for confusion there. <laughs> I just want to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would definitely spice this up. Uh, it's it's crazy how Shell Trap has already done more damage than Jimmy's attacks have done so far <laughs> with this 80 damage recoil effect. <laughs> <laughs> Something we were just discussing uh, with Jeremy in the previous round is how risk averse people are against confusion. Yeah. People just do not want to flip that coin and go for the attack. Uh, there's just something about flipping tails in your attack failing that just feels so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, sometimes I think it's just correct to go for it. You just got to accept whatever happens. We'll see if uh, Jimmy takes that route or plays that switch. Yeah, don't let past experience fool you because everyone remembers the tails, but they don't <laughs> remember that one time they got lucky and got the win. But yeah, we will see Jimmy just uh, switch out. It looks like he's going to be eyeing up a Volcanic Heat, which is a, a pretty clean knockout. Yeah, this uh, looks like a great spot for Jimmy. Thanks to the Shell Trap damage, he's able to Volcanic Heat for the knockout. Going down to two prize cards, and if I'm Chris Abernathy here, I am considering just conceding and moving on to game two. Yeah, if he didn't top deck that Tapu Lele, we would have saved a lot of time. He probably would have just conceded right there on the spot. But with N, anything is possible, or at least <laughs> so Chris thinks he's going to give it a shot. Yeah, we do see the N, so both players will shuffle in. Chris will draw six cards. Jimmy will draw two. Now, the unfortunate thing for Chris, I think, is uh, Jimmy's kind of set up. Look at all the energy on board. He also has Starmie in play, so it's going to take a lot for Chris to come back here, but it could all start with the end. Yeah, uh, we'll see what Chris is able to come up with here. Uh, on the other hand, J Jimmy, as if he's able to find uh, just a Lysander, he should be able to close out this game with a retreat and uh, some potential steam-ups. Uh, he can use a Beacon to get his energies back with Starmie, so uh, Garbotoxin would be great for Chris here too. Yeah, he even has the Fighting Fury belt on the Turtonator GX, so he can already do 170 damage. Looking yep. good for Jimmy if he finds Lysander here. It'll be game over. If he doesn't, though, I mean, he cannot use Volcanic Heat this turn. What do you think he'll do? Yeah, that mainly, when uh, if you don't have a switching effect or, or a float stone, that means you're probably going to have to use that big manual retreat and uh, hide either with the Volcanian, or he can get sneaky and use his GX attack and get uh, let Nitro Tank fuel up his board again. So I think this is an awkward situation. So Jimmy can Wonder Tag. He could grab Lysander, but then he doesn't have a card in hand to Space Beacon and get back the energy for his Turtonator GX. Yeah. Uh, so he's kind of one card off of winning here. I wonder what he'll grab with the Wonder Tag. Yeah, this might mean that he just tries to get his hand refilled and uh, continue on. He's not in a spot where he needs to make a big play like the Lysander. So I fully expect to see the Sycamore in there. He is picking that. You are correct. So Jimmy off of that end of two finds the Ultra Ball, which gets him the Tapu Lele GX, which gets him the Professor Sycamore, which gets him seven new cards. Yep, it's a great chaining effect that uh, <laughs> ends up with Jimmy 
doing a lot of work in this opening game for us. And he is able to find a float stone and a switch. He has just about everything that he could want. So far, so good for Jimmy Pendarvis, one of our top 16 players in the North American region, showing off just why he's one of the best. Chris Abernathy unable to get anything going in this game, falling way far behind. And it looks like Jimmy is very close to closing this game out. Yeah, these are spots where uh, I, if I was in Chris's shoes, I probably would concede. It's just your, your deck isn't built to withstand this many prize cards uh, when you have when you have taken zero. Uh, the, even if you get some successful trades with the Garboder, uh, it's still going to you're still going to end up losing that prize exchange. Yeah, and we see the Space Beacon from Starmie discarding a card to get two fire energy from the discard pile back into Jimmy's hand. As we were saying earlier, Brooklet Hill has really enabled this addition of Starmie into these Volcanion decks. And it looks like big Volcanic Heat knockout, and that's going to prompt Chris to scoop up his cards, and Jimmy Pendarvis will take game number one. Yeah, very well played by Jimmy there. I, I, I like how he went and used the Volcanion uh, as the attacker there, just in case the Tapu Lele was able to pull off a miracle, he had the Turtonator ready to do 170 damage, which would have been a perfect return knockout. So playing everything right when you're ahead usually ends with a, a win there, and he's got the first <laughs> game for us. Yeah, that's something we see the best players do. Uh, it's easy to be in a position where your opponent doesn't do anything for a couple turns and you take the lead. Uh, sometimes it's not easy to make sure your opponent doesn't come back. And we saw Jimmy do that flawlessly there, making every perfect play to give himself the best chance and kind of shut the door on his opponent. Didn't give Chris any breathing room. Uh, kept the pressure on, looked at all the outs, the possible ways he could lose, and took them all away. And eventually, Jimmy just took game number one. Yep. Now, uh, if I'm Chris, I'm not feeling too bad. Your, your deck just didn't perform that game, and you know that this matchup isn't unwinnable for you by any means. The fact that you have Garbotox and Garboder, that means that you can lock out all of those abilities that we saw Jimmy using so often that game. So if you, sc you can stop those early, perhaps get that Hex Maniac off at opportune times for you, it means that you definitely can win at two games here with this much time remaining. Yeah, that certainly was not indicative of how the matchup typically goes. Uh, it's more complex than that. Even though Volcanion plays many fewer item cards than it did before, there's still that interaction with the Garbotoxin, turning off all the abilities. Uh, Espeon GX is actually really annoying for the Volcanion deck, having to constantly deal with confusion. So uh, we'll see if uh, anything different happens in game number two. Yep. Well, looking over at Jimmy's hand, he has a lot of supporter choices and he found an energy for his baby Volcanian start which seems like a pretty good start for him oh. but whoa <laughs> uh, okay well two Volcanion EX prize for Jimmy and much like uh, your brother Ryan he's only playing three of those in his deck so only has access to one Volcanion EX that's gonna hurt yeah this is where playing Fighting Fury Belt can really help because he's gonna need to find a way to accelerate a little extra damage onto the board <laughs> and with only one steam up uh, in your arsenal, that means that you're going to be counting on every last damage counter. Thanks. Uh, that's going to be some bad news when he realizes that happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, <laughs> that first Brooklyn Hill is going to be... Whoa. Whoa. Oh! Maybe more important, <laughs> both Tapu Lele GX... Uh, oh, actually, sorry. Chris plays three. So uh. just two out of the three Tapu Lele GX <laughs> prized for Chris. Uh, weird prize cards here to start game number two. Uh, if you're watching at home, please get on social media, join the conversation, use the hashtag PlayPokemon. Tell us who you think is going to win this matchup. Can Chris make the comeback with the Trash Lanch, or will Jimmy close out round number 13, get his ninth victory uh, in the international championships? Yeah, you can also tell us whose prize cards are worse, because I can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually more interested to hear that. Tell us <laughs> what is worse, two Volcanian prize or two Tapu Lele prize? <laughs> well, uh, fortunate for Chris, he's got a pretty fantastic start. Opening with that Bridget means he doesn't have to search it out with a Tapu Lele like you generally do. So he saved one Tapu Lele there, and uh, he's able to get an immediate evolution uh, with that Eevee and the Psychic. Uh, so he's in a pretty great spot. Yeah, looks good so far. Espeon GX on board with the Psychic Energy. Uh, Jimmy going to go ahead and play the Brooklet Hill, which will allow him to find out the bad news. 
to Volcanion EX prize, uh, <laughs> but he'll still get the remaining third one. This is where I wish we just cut to the mic and we could hear Jimmy, come on. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a face reaction. Right. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we get to see that look on his face. But uh, we do see the one Volcanion EX, and well, either he's no-selling it or he didn't take the time to look through. But just one. Uh, we'll see how he adapts to this situation with uh, only one Volcanion EX in his deck. Yep, now he does play two Max Elixirs and was fortunate <laughs> enough to find one immediately. Uh, with the Slokani, and they don't commit all in with the four Max Elixir, so being able to find that in your opening turn and have success with it, that's great for Jimmy there. And from Jimmy, both players will shuffle in and draw one card for each of their remaining prize cards, so that will be six for both players. Uh, if you stick around and watch the TCG at all or play a few games, you will inevitably see N being played, usually multiple times in a game. It is just ridiculously good in many stages. Early on, it's used as a draw card. Uh, later in the game, it can be used to disrupt your opponent. It's just probably the most powerful supporter card we've had in a long time. Right. Uh, we see uh, Jimmy was able to get a little extra damage with that steam up, and that means he's going to get the energy acceleration here. Uh, that softening of the Espeon is going to be important because he needs to play some damage counters as it's going to be very hard for him to ever hit 200 with both Volcanian's <laughs> prize there. That is true. We do see the power heater for 50 after the steam up, so we'll soften up Espeon GX. Also gets the energy onto the bench Turtonator GX. So he's spreading around his energy a little bit. And now we're going to see how does Chris proceed from here. Does he go with a Psychic or does he go oh, for a Psybeam? He had a choice there to play N. And he had, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that looked like 3N in a VS Seeker that he threw away with the Sycamore. So All he's right. not going to have any supporters coming that aren't uh, Sycamore here from for a while. <laughs> Uh, and Chris does not find his Garbotoxin Garboder, just going to go for the Psybeam. So even though Jimmy has some bad prize cards, perhaps not in a terrible position. But uh, here is the ever-important decision. How do you approach Confusion from Espeon GX? Yeah, if Jimmy doesn't find a way to, to switch and retreat, maybe with a switch card and a star you, uh, he's going to have to face that decision. And... I think it's worth the risk if you have some fire energy in your discard pile, definitely, because that energy acceleration can be so important. Yeah, but uh, I think this just points out how important Psybeam is. Uh, yeah. If you just allowed your opponent to power heater again, that's two extra energy. And uh, if they flip tails, that's a big momentum swing. We do see Field Blower coming from Jimmy, discarding a Float Stone, and Professor Sycamore for Fresh Hand of Seven, and we'll see how he follows up on this turn. Yeah, that was a, a great hand for Jimmy. It played perfectly, but uh, this hand that he drew into is a lot of fire energies. <laughs> it is no straight switch. fire. <laughs> uh, is that four fire energy? Yep. All right, not bad. Yeah, uh, I'm sure Ultra Ball would have been pretty great or anything to get these fires out of his hand because he, uh, he can't do much with them sitting there when he can't steam up more than once a turn. Uh, do you think he'll go for a Nitro Tank GX, um, attach, retreat, steam up, and just get a bunch of fire? Uh, that's definitely a, a good idea for him here, but he's going to take the chance. All right. I like it. <laughs> and you get rewarded. Sometimes lucky, <laughs> and it worked out for Jimmy. Uh, yeah, that was a big coin flip in this game. That's two extra energy on the board. But I am glad to finally see someone take the risk on uh, the confusion flip. You got to do it sometimes. There was really no, not much of a downside either. If you get tails, great. You take three damage counters. It does set up Espeon to knock you out with Psychic, but still, I, I think you go for it. And uh, all we see is a Psybeam from Chris, and now it's back on Jimmy's turn. Right, and Jimmy's now in a spot where if he doesn't want to take the knockout with the Volcanian. Shell Trap is going to be threatening a knockout if Espeon attacks back into it. So uh, that 50 damage along with getting an energy was huge for Jimmy there. Float Stone going on to the Volcanian. He can retreat now to the Volcanian EX and Volcanic Heat. To your point, Kyle, you were mentioning how uh, Chris had played Sycamore and discarded a lot of supporters, and it might affect him later. I don't think he did a whole lot on his previous turn. I think he has a Sycamore in hand, but I, I think he's afraid to discard all of these resources at this point. 
Yeah, and he has two float stones in his hand, and he al we already saw field blower knock out uh, two other float stones. So one more field blower oh. uh, would be really, really rough for Chris uh, because he wants to play both those float stones before he uses that sycamore. Two prize cards taken for Jimmy. Zero Volcania <laughs> EX. <laughs> he's like, I know you're in there somewhere, guys, but uh, he's not going to find it just yet. We are going to see the rescue stretcher uh, save the Espeon. But, yeah, he's, it looks like he's probably going to have to just play down everything and use this Sycamore, which is a, a risk that I don't think he had to take when he, you, when he threw away all those ends earlier. Yep, Chris playing Sycamore, drawing a fresh hand of seven, probably looking for a psychic energy, which he does find, and attached to the active. And uh, will we see that Garbotoxin Garboder here shutting down those steam up? Well, the steam up. There's only one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it still does make a big difference in terms of damage output. Absolutely. It's also going to start making an impact because it's going to sh uh, shut off the Starmie, yep. which is a way for Jimmy to, to stay in this game when he starts to run a little low on resources. So there we see it. Garbotoxin in effect. Pokemon no longer have abilities as long as Pokemon Tool Card is attached to that Garboder. And another Psybeam, that's been the only offense from Chris this entire game. Yep, now looking over at Jimmy's side, I see the switch in his hand again. Wow. So he has that option for himself. Uh, going to be using the Ultra Ball, not too uh, wary of uh, adding to this Trash Lanch because he hasn't played many items this game. You see the Ultra Ball, he's eyeing up Turtonator GX. Boy, what if that was a Volcanian EX? Yeah, it would have yeah. looked a little better. <laughs> yeah, he would have liked that a lot more. <laughs> so Jimmy's going to continue his turn here. We'll see how many item cards he has to use. Uh, it might be the stage of the game where you don't care about playing items anymore. If you get so far ahead, you're like, whatever. You knock me out in one hit, cool, I win next turn. It's right. not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that usually works out in your favor. Looks like we see a switch once again, finding a way around that confusion. And... For like the third time, he's played out his entire hand in Sycamore. So uh, when you're running hot, you're running hot. <laughs> yeah, but zero high fives being offered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Field blower. Goodbye, float stones. And hello, steam up. We could see a knockout here with the steam up and a bright flame from Turtonator GX if he wants to go that route. Yeah, that's gonna that would be 200 damage exactly, and uh, that is not what Chris wants to see. He has no more float stones, so uh, the only way for him to put this Garbotoxin back in is with a choice band on his Garbodor, and uh, he's already seen that Jimmy's taken so many prize cards. It's gonna be really hard for him to come back here. We see Field Blower discarding two Fighting Fury Belt, and the end from Chris. So if he's gonna make any kind of comeback, it has to start here. I wonder how many item cards are in Jimmy's discard pile. Uh, I can't imagine enough for a trash lanch to knock out this Turtonator GX. Boy, yeah. I think he needs to find a tool for that uh, Garbotoxin Garboder. Otherwise, I mean, there's just going to be a constant stream energy from that Starmie. Yeah, and you, you said the N, and, and that, it's literally the only N left. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, he's not, and he just found a bunch of psychic energies. There's nothing to really help him out here. So we'll see how many items are in the discard pile for the Trash and Lanch. Looks like maybe six or so. I don't think nearly enough for a knockout, but I guess we'll find the answer right here. Yeah, it looks like a, the Ultra Ball, a few tools, the Max Elixir. Yeah, it looks like eight is the count, so 160 damage. Being done with that Trash and Lanch attack, and can Jimmy find a way to retreat this Turtonator GX? It doesn't have enough energy to use Bright Flame again. And uh, Shell Trap is okay, but, I mean, maybe if you could steam up Shell Trap, that could be okay. But he finds the Float Stone, and everything is going Jimmy's way so far. Yeah, he had already used a Float Stone we see there on the Volcanian, and we have already seen two Switch cards. But, yes, he has the Float Stone immediately after the end of two. So that worked out fantastic for Jimmy. And uh, he's going to have the option to Volcanic Heat and knock out this Garbodor, leaving himself with just one prize. Yeah, Jimmy has dominated this series through and through. Uh, Chris had a rough start in game one. Game two, he really didn't have a rough start at all. He kind of did what he wanted to do. He got Espeon GX out early, used Psybeam. He got Garbotoxin going. Uh, it might all go back to that one big Sycamore where he discarded all of his resources, but one more Volcanic Heat knocking out that Garboder, and uh, the writing might be on the wall for Chris Abernathy. One prize card remaining for Jimmy Pendarvis. 
Yeah, Chris is going to try to find a way out of this, but it seems pretty difficult. We know that it, no matter what, it has to start with uh, the uh, the tool card coming down onto the Garbodor. He needs to stop the Starmie from using Space Beacon so that he can get an energy card for that Turtonator. Uh, that's that's going to be where Jimmy finds most of his damage. So he's going to have to find that, and he's also going to have to knock out this active Volcanion, which he can do with uh, the uh, the Trash Lanch Garbodor. Yeah, I think he just needs too much. Yeah, uh, that's a lot. All Jimmy needs is an energy, and he wins, essentially, with that Bright Flame. Uh, kind of funny, even with two Volcanion EX prized, he was still able to pretty much dominate this matchup. Uh, shows you just how great of a player Jimmy is. Uh, but we do see the Lysander onto this other Turtonator GX. Perhaps Chris trying to trap it in the active spot, but uh, I don't know how long that's going to be very effective. Yeah, well, we have seen two float and two switches, so uh, this Turtonator will be hanging out in the active spot for a little while, but uh, what is this doing for Chris? It's, it, it buys him a little more time, but uh, Jimmy's already got two attackers ready to go. Yeah, unless we see some crazy, like, divide GX setup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think, well, let's see, is Chris playing? He is playing Oricorio. That's one way to kind of spread some damage around. We saw that uh, at the Madison Regional Championships in a similar matchup. Where, uh, oh, I remember that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Danny Altavia got a big Oricorio play. But uh, this seems a little more difficult. Uh, Professor Sycamore going to be the play for Jimmy after attaching to his active Turtonator GX, and he has not used his GX attack yet, so Nitro Tank GX is an option. And, yeah, it's just uh, what can Chris do here? Is there any way he can avoid getting one more Pokemon knocked out? I think the only way that he even stays in the game right now is to Lysander the Volcanian with one energy, <laughs> uh, or maybe the Starmie, and just hope that there's no way to retreat. But, yeah, it, it seems w really difficult for him to come back here. We will see. I think uh, Steam Up and boom, the GX attack. GX marker is flipped, and I think this will close the door on this series. Nitro Tank GX getting up to five fire energy from the discard pile and attaching them to your Pokemon however you want. Now that is three fully powered giant attackers, and uh, Jimmy only has to take one knockout. Yeah, we, we see the Valiant effort that Chris put up. Look at all the damage counters that are over on Jimmy Pendarvis' side, but just the math really didn't work out for him. Uh, Chris was got so close to taking all these knockouts, but yet he hasn't been able to take a single prize card. Yeah, so Chris is going to find uh, try to look for any way to not lose, but uh, I think this Professor Sycamore will essentially seal his fate. There is no way for him to stop Jimmy from taking the, the last knockout. And we do see the choice ban and the trash avalanche <laughs> attack. But Jimmy Pendarvis just going to send out Volcanian Volcanic Heat, and he will take this series two to zero. Yep, congratulations to Jimmy Pendarvis. That was fantastically played. Uh, I think this deck is a great call for the tournament. We've seen uh, a lot of great players finding success with it, and uh, Jimmy was able to get his ninth win there. So he's going to be sitting in a pretty good spot. Definitely, he is in prime position to get himself near that top eight finish where everybody wants to be right now. We're kind of in the final stretch.